Okay, let's get started. Um, we are going to paint this blank MDF handcrafted holiday traditions um, blank. And this is um, number 0007, PLA0007. We have these in the shop and um, they come packaged like this. There's two pieces and um, I guess you could call this like a farmhouse style cutting board, but it's really for decoration. This is not for like using with food or, or cutting on or anything. And this is the other part, um, the other side of the bag. So we're gonna paint this with um, Pintart bonding primer. Nice and dry, pretty much. So now let's do this side. We'll be decorating both sides of this um, project too. So we're gonna add more bonding primer to this side. Okay, we can paint with our Pentart Decor Chalky Paint now. Um, and it is in the color white. And it has great coverage, this paint. It only goes a long way. And we don't have to, you know, do a real thick coat. We just want a, a, a good little white base for our rice paper. So, I mean, these are the same on both sides so it doesn't you know you just choose which way you want to start with the front or the back so here is our paper darling little hand painted bunny and this design was hand painted by um, Teresa Renee Art and she is the founder and owner of Decoupage Queen and she's a wonderful artist and um, you can watch her create and learn from her on her um, Teresa Renee art page on Facebook and also on YouTube. And you can follow her on Instagram as well. That's pretty well centered. Now. this over. I'm going to use our water watercolor pen. So we're going to hold this on here and just sort of wet tear away carefully. your bunny. So we have um, cut out our hand-painted bunny to fit on our centerpiece and we're going to set the rice paper aside and we're going to get a coat of um, bonding primer on here and then some chalky paint and get the bunny decoupaged on there. Okay, time for some chalk paint. So now we're applying our Pintart Decoupage Varnish and Glue in matte finish. And we're just gonna start up here. Apply a little decoupage varnish and glue. And you might notice how um, a chalky painted surface that you decoupage on is gonna, like the decoupage 
varnish glue really gets sucked up on the chalky paint. So I like to take my IOD silicone paint blade and smooth out my paper as I go along. And I lift it up to another little section. I kind of get underneath there a little bit. Kind of start in the center and move outward when we smooth it out. Kind of helps eliminate wrinkles. And put the rest in there. Make sure I get my decoupage glue out to the edges. You want to make sure you get good coverage with decoupage varnish and glue under the paper because when you, um, if you don't have good coverage, you can get air bubbles under there and then the paper may kink up or bubble up. I tore a little paper there. So it's nice and smooth. You want to be gentle with it. When the paper gets wet, it can, um, you know, it can tear pretty easily. Let me clean up my little space here. Get that glue off of there. The glass mats are fabulous. Really clean up nicely. Okay, now we can sit this back on here and decoupage on top. We give it a nice coat. I'm using soft, like I'm not pressing hard with my brush. I'm just um, kind of gently moving it. So I'm making sure that I am getting my decoupage varnish and glue over the sides here. It's so cute, isn't it? Give you a nice close up there. Pretty bunny Teresa Renee painted. So adorable. We're just gonna let this dry for a little bit tacky in spots. So we're gonna set it aside and I'll come back and we'll do the, um, this part and we'll get this guy on here. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we're back. And um, is what I decided to do as um, I just laid the cutout piece of rice paper over the oval bunny. And um, I will lift it up and show you. So see, it's a cutout. And it's really nice to do it this way because you're not wasting this beautiful rice paper. Um, and is what we're gonna do, since it comes to this end here, we see this, so we lose some of these flowers. And then it goes up to here, so we'll have this part to cover. So we will be tearing away these pieces. And we can um, move these up if we want and put them around the corners. And we'll have these flowers here. And we can piece things up here. I mean, there's a lot of options when you're working with um, decoupage rice paper. And we will get use out of every bit of this beautiful design. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna glue bunny on first, okay? 
So it's what I did is I used the grid lines of my glass craft mat to line this up. So there's two lines here and this um, cutting board fits right in between them perfectly. And there's a line here, so I can move this back down. He's nice and even. So, and if it looks crooked, it's probably because my camera may be kind of crooked. So, we just need to glue him on, and we don't want to um, lose our place. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get a pencil. Whoops, my lead just literally fell right out. Oh, let's try this one. So we're gonna make a light pencil mark right here, okay? If I can see what I'm doing. And down here, okay? And I'm gonna lift it up. Here's my marks. So I know to place this right back there. And I feel like it's not centered now. <laughs> Here's my center point, right there. Here's my line. Probably make a line over here too, on the right and left. That way we put it where we want it. Okay, so now we're gonna get our um, Pentart Express Glue. This stuff adheres MDF, HDF, clay molds, um, resin. It does, it, it's a great glue. We really love it. And it doesn't take a whole lot. So, is what I do is I, um, Just get a brush and I sort of spread mine around so we can um, I just lightly go over it just make sure it's all around on here okay yeah let's get bunny on here Find my markings. Okay, we're good. So, there we go. So we just wanna press this down. sticking okay not going anywhere so now I'm gonna park this back on here so is what I want to do here is I am gonna start with the decoupage glue here and here. Because those are the main parts that I really wanna have lined up nicely. And any um, bare spots from the tearing of the paper, we're gonna wrap twine around here and it's gonna hide that. I was thinking some kind of natural twine would be cute on here. And I mean, you could do a twine with like a color. They have all kinds of twines now. Okay. So let's just make sure this thing stays still for me. 
So we're gonna go all around here like this. Go up there. That's good. All right, let's get our paper straight and shift it a little bit. paper carefully and just get up under these areas around the sides of the oval and um, get that paper adhered. And then move it up around here. turn this around. That way I can better work on this side. Okay. So now we want to get the paper off all the sides right here. And we're going to wet tear it because I want to use these to possibly patch in around the project because I think the flowers are so pretty. We don't want to waste our paper. Okay, and there you go. So there's some paper on the sides here, but that's okay. We're gonna smooth it down with some decoupage varnish. It'd be fine. So we want to go over the whole piece with decoupage varnish and glue. Alright, I think we're good. Um, oh, this would be so cute. I love this paper. It's so pretty. There we go. Adorable. All right. I'm going to sit something on here to weight it down and try to put my silicone blade so nothing sticks. And tart jewelry con this is jewelry concrete, nice and heavy. So there we go. I think we can just yeah, we need it up here. Kind of leaning, I know that's weird. We can put this here. Well, actually, I get another one. That's helping a lot. It's pressing it down. I don't see the cracks sticking up anymore. All right, we're gonna let this sit and dry and we'll come back and we'll do all the fussy, pretty stuff. Hi, okay, so we're back and we um, are adding the um, Pintart glaze paste um, in a stencil design to the corners here. And we're using the um, Botanic Garden Stencil by Decoupage Queen. It's number 0005, and they come packaged like this. And um, these are reusable stencils, and they're um, made in the USA, and they're 10 milliliter Mylar laser cut stencils. Um, so is what I've done is I've already applied the stencils down here, and I'm going to apply these little designs up here and um, I am going to get my glaze paste and show you. So here is the glaze paste and this is um, 
The color is called Olive Gold, and it's the iridescent color in the line of glaze paste. And um, it's really, really pretty. And we're gonna use a, um, a smaller palette knife. Um, I just prefer the smallest size in this set. And um, I actually have a new set here. These are in the shop and they're called Artist Palette Knives. And they're stainless steel with wooden handles. And they're really nicely made, nice and sturdy. So let's get some glaze paste on here. And the, the middle oval panel is raised. So you have to come over here at your stencil design and you kind of have to hold it down. Um, I haven't taped this down and I made little marks with a pencil at the corners. So if this shifts, I know where to put my corners back. Um, I have painter's tape somewhere and I can't find it. So I'm just sort of winging it here. So we're just gonna apply this like this. And I just sort of am dabbing it right now more than I am spreading it around. And this goes on like white. And you can see the little subtle iridescent sparkles and it dries to like this really pretty um, pale greenish color. It's, it's really a lot like the color of the pale spring green leaves in this design. So now we're just gonna wipe off that excess paste. Okay, we're gonna let that, we're gonna let go gently. Keep, keep your stencil straight, don't let it move. Then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do this side. I want um, <clears throat> subtle touches with the glaze paste on this design. I think it'll be really pretty. This side is being fussy. It's really trying to puff up on me. Just going slow. Okay, now we're just gonna lift up really carefully. And there you go, it's perfect. So it, this is a little thicker on this one, but that's okay. This one here was thicker than this one and they they turned out pretty. I mean, they, they you can't tell and it looks really beautiful the way it dried. So I'll lift this up and let you see in the light um, how the dried stencil turned out. It's really, really pretty. So it's right here. If you can see, and here's this one over here. Very pretty, you know? So we have to let that dry. We don't want to touch it or mess it up. I'll be back. We're going to let this dry. Okay. Now we're ready to um, stencil in the uh, glaze paste on the sides, like a little scrolly design on the side. So um, is what I found when I was working this out is um, these little, this little design here is what I'm gonna do. And it, so it kind of flows with the little flourishes I already stenciled on. And um, I measured the space between the um, stencil design here. If you can see the right there. And then the one up here. So it came out to be um, a little shy of four inches. So um, I took a pencil and I marked the halfway point right here and on the side and I just more or less eyeball where I have to place this so I just sort of and I use this 
this side to stencil over here. And then we'll go over here to, to this side and stencil over here because they fit well and they lay flat and they're just where I want them. If I try to do it like this, it doesn't lay flat for me and it's a little tough. So um, let's get this on here and get this uh, stenciled on. I'm so right-handed. Hold this close and you can see. There it is. A little scroll right there. Right there. And I'll try to show you that color again. So just little little subtle touches that you know, if you have like a piece of decor and you, you know, you walk by it and you think, oh, that's pretty. And, and then the iridescent olive gold glaze paste catches your eye, it, you know, it catches in the light and, um, it's just a pretty little accent. Okay. Now we're going to add, um, the established 1974, um, letters and numbers on the stencil so they sort of fit in the middle here but they're very much close to the edge so as what I did is I took that center point that I marked with the pencil earlier and I eyeball like I line up this portion of the established I'll give you a close-up see and there's the number I sort of Dab it and then rub it. There you go. Okay, we're going to lift that off. And there you go. Perfect. So I'm going to take the heat gun and start drying it but I'll show you this is what it looks like and it'll dry to that pretty color so I'll be right back okay now we are going to stencil in the numbers that's it I think I got it hard to see you know So now we're going to take these little flourish designs that we used over here and I'm going to have them centering, centered here and they're going to go like this on each side and I want to line the flourish up right under the bunny, the base of the bunny's little feet and then I'm just going to slide this over so that this fits onto the oval. Make sure it's straight. Let me get a glaze paste and just get it on here. There we go. And lift it off. Perfect. So now we are applying the um, glaze paste to the other side for a little flourish that our bunnies cute little feet. Okay, there we go. Okay, we just want to take um, this tiny dot 
and put it in the center of our flourishes over here. And I kind of marked a teeny dab of paste just so I can, you know, put the dot on the right spot. Um, there we go. Easy peasy, quick and easy. There we go. So we're gonna touch up the um, little whitish areas that are around the oval. And we're gonna use Pentart acrylic paint matte in the color Nimbus. And this is a really light, light, kind of pale sage spring green. It, it really matches um, over here pretty perfectly. So I'll just um, hold this up closer. So I just have a, like a tiny, tiny, tiny touch of paint. And as you can see, it blends quite well. Pretty perfect color. And um, I just tip my brush in the, the tiniest, slightest bit of water um, to help, you know, blend it out so it's not too saturated on here. I mean, this is going to get covered up anyway, but there are some areas that go out a little further than I want. So I'm just going to blend them in. Okay, that's good. So, there you go. Okay, so we're going to um, patch a scrap of decoupage paper from this design at the top here on the handle. And um, I'm just putting this little tiny patch of purple flower right here because this paper runs a tiny bit short from when I tore it. So, and this hole is not aligned exactly in the center, but that's okay. And, um, you know, if you put a bow in your string ribbon, you won't you won't even notice it. So, the eye of this flower is centered with the hole, and that's that's what I want to do. Okay. So, I'm just gonna get some decoupage varnish and glue on here. There you go. That will look nice. Can't even tell. Especially when it dries. So save your scraps when you're working on stuff. Don't throw them away. So let me give you a look at our um, stenciling. Okay, now we're going to decoupage the back, and we'll just flip it over. This is um, Decoupage Queen's French Green Sack, and this paper has been wildly popular, and it's from a prior release, and I just love it. It has um, a lot of the same colors in it as the um, bunny on the front. And it has like a touch of light sage green olive and the vintage, like natural beigey color. Um, it's perfect. I like it for the back. And let's get this squared away. So we're just going to apply the whole piece just as is. And it falls a little bit short right up here at the top. But that's okay because we'll have this 
entire these sections here to just patch the top. And we're gonna use um, Pentart decoupage varnish and glue in matte. That blob of glue there drives me nuts. Get that out of there. I just want to go ahead and get that border, that white border off first before I get decoupage glue all over it. Then it's hard to get them off. There we go. Okay, so that's done, and we're going to go ahead and um, get these borders removed, and I'll be back. Okay, we have applied the um, French grain sock paper by Decoupage Queen to the back of our Spring Bunny farmhouse board. And we're just applying a coat of uh, decoupage varnish and glue over it. Okay. So we have to let this dry. And then we'll do some uh, cracking gel on the front of the project. Okay, now we're going to apply um, Pintart Transparent Cracking Gel. And this is um, component one, which we'll apply first. And then there's a uh, component two. And we have to let component one dry for about 20 minutes. And then we can apply component two. And that takes about 20 minutes to dry. And um, component um, one creates a really shiny surface when you apply it um it's very transparent when it dries so let's see um i think we'll put some up here we're just going to kind of randomly apply it this is a uh, also um cracking gel component one is very uh gummy kind of you know like sticky I guess is the word maybe I'm looking for. And um, we're just gonna randomly apply this. And it's okay to brush this over your um, stencil glaze paste. It doesn't hurt anything. I have decoupage paper that's stuck around the sides that I have to sand off from the back of the thing. So I'll do that later. So I'm gonna put some here. And here. I kinda like focus on the um, perimeter of a project, you know, where maybe cracking and aging would naturally occur. And then also I try to remember to get it up in areas around here. Go back over that part. Just do a little, little right there. And you know, when you go to apply your um, component number two of transparent cracking gel. <clears throat> You'll know where to apply it because you just look for the shiny areas that component number one left behind. So, put 
some down here. Maybe just a little bit on the bunny. So I'm using the, the transparent crack and gel again because you know it's open and it's almost finished. And I don't like I don't like to waste my product, so I like to use it up. And um, I've used it on the last several projects. Um, so when I run out of this, I'll open up something new. Maybe some crackle medium or fine line crackle or something. So there we go. We have to just let that dry. And I'll be back for uh, component number two of transparent cracking gel. Okay, I'm back. And we're going to apply uh, component number two of um, the Pintart transparent cracking gel. And um, I wanted to mention again, when you apply any of the crackle or cracking mediums, make sure you use a clean, dry brush. No water, no wet brushes. Clean, dry brush. Okay, so I'm gonna look for the, the shiny spots, as you can see, from where we applied component number one. See how shiny it is? So I'm just gonna put my cracking gel transparent on these little shiny areas. And you can um, go in different brush stroke directions with your um, application of component one and two because this, um, you know, can in impact the shape and size and look of your crackles. And um, also, you know, however thick you apply the crackle um, can determine the depth and network of your uh, crackles. So if you do like long strokes, you can get longer crackle patterns. If you do short, choppy, you can get like, you know, smaller kind of crackle pattern. I think we got it covered. Maybe missed a little bit there. I think we're good. And I just need to take a A bit of cloth and clean up around here. So I'll get this cleaned up and this dries for about 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll um, come back and check our crackles and add some uh, antique paste. Okay we're back and um, the um, cracking gel transparent by Pintart. Both components have dried on here and I started applying antique gold antique paste in the crackles on here. I chose um, Pintart's antique paste in antique gold because we have the olive gold in the glaze paste. And um, sometimes I just don't want dark brown umbra in my crackles. So um, is what we will do is go around the edges with Umbra, the dark brown, for more oldie look. And for now, we're kind of um, taking the brush, we're dipping it into the antique gold antique paste, and we're getting the crackles in around here. And I like to mix my antique paste colors. Like I'll even add a little bit of gold to here so that I can, um, you know, the gold and the antique will really make your crackles glow. They're very pretty. And um, I really love how they look. My Valentine bird heart ornament that I made 
Um, if you watched that live, you will see how I did the crackles. And they're in gold, antique gold, and umbra. And I really love the way it turned out. So we'll do the little mix on here too. And I like to use a brush for this. And um, I put my gloves on because um, I might be trying a little liquid patina on the back. Maybe a touch on the front. I'm not sure yet. My, uh, you know, things come to me as I move along in a project. Sometimes I can do a project and I know exactly what I want to do. But sometimes I just have to work it and go along and then I figure it out. So I'm making sure I have plenty on here because we're going to go in with a soft cloth and wipe it back. So I'm liking that. I think that's going to be very pretty. So let's wipe it back with our old towel here. My old paint towel. And if you don't like the amount of, um, you know, wax paste in your crackles, you think you put too much, you think it's too dark, too much color, you can go in with um, Pentart solvent cleaner and um, whoops I'm butterfingers tonight go in with solvent cleaner and um, wipe it back you know just dab some on a cloth and you go in with your cloth and it cleans it right up it brightens your crackles back up oh yeah this is pretty I like it right there a little bit okay so Maybe that helps. So here's our crackles and our antique gold paste. I have this weird spot right here. Didn't really crackle. I have a feeling I must have missed applying the, the second component right there. So, and there's this little corner here. A little dark. Lots of crackles going on. And um, as you recall, I put the crackle medium transparent cracking gel over the stencil design. So it did crackle them a little bit, which I love. I think that's very cool. Okay. Enough of that. All right. So now is what I want to do is I want to go in to the other crackles with... Um, Antique Paste Gold, which is a little brighter. And okay. If you think it's too much, you could take your, your Pintart solvent cleaner and um, you just dab, make like a little corner on your towel and you just dab a little bit on there. Make sure you wear gloves when you handle these solvent based products. And you just go in gently with your solvent cleaner and you can wipe away some of your antique paste if you think it's too much in the areas. Okay, there you go. And if you think you've wiped away too much, you just go back in with your brush and reapply. 
And we'll be giving this a nice coat of uh, clear varnish gloss to um, protect our crackles and our stencils and everything. Let's see if you can get a look at that. So you can see there's like the gold crackle there, gold in here, and I think I need to add some back over here. I like it. A little too much got rubbed away. So I want to add it back in. So on here, I want to decide which color antique paste I want to do. I think I'll do the same here. I'll go in with the antique gold around the perimeter and the gold on the rest. So let's do the gold first on this one. We can always add the darker over the top. So this is antique paste gold. So here we go. Okay. Oh, I love it. Very pretty. Okay. So now I'm going to wipe it back. Stay away from our wet solvent spot on the towel unless we want to use it. So I like it. The gold, antique paste and gold crackles on the bunny make the bunny kind of glow. Very pretty. So, to be a close up. Lots of good crackles here and here, here. And then I'm gonna get the antique gold with the little brush to do the perimeter. So we just wanna go around like this. There's so much you can do with these um, handcrafted holiday traditions. Um, bases, um, MDF blanks. Like this would be really pretty painted with a, um, like one of these greens in here or maybe the brown from the grain sack, gold. So let's rub that in to the crackles really well. Now, Go around and just sort of rub it back. Now I think it would do well to have a little bit of the antique paste and umbra around the perimeters as well. I think that, um, you know, a touch of it would be really, really nice. So, there we go. I'm just kind of blotting the antique paste in the color umbra. Some people call it umber. I call it umbra, which is what it says on the jar. I'm blotting it on mostly, and then I'll go in and rub it in. I just want to like get it distributed around. Okay. Now, let's just sort of brush it in. Okay, okay. Okay. I love it. I think it's great. 
give you a closer look. Nice little crackles over there in the corners and all around. Okay, now we're going to do this also with the antique piece umbrella. Like I think it needs to be a little darker. Make that oval pop, you know? So now... Under, I'm just gonna like add a little bit of umbra to some areas around here. Maybe up here to my flower. Just sort of random areas, okay? Nice old antique oldie. Okay. Okay, and the way it looks. I'm happy with that. Okay. And on the back, we applied the Botanic Garden Stencil by Decoupage Queen with the um, glaze paste in olive gold. And it's still drying. I mean, it's pretty dry, but it has some... I don't know, I think it has a little bit more to do to dry. So this is the back, it's really, really pretty. And um, I'll be doing some um, antiquing on the back of here too. So I think on the back here, we're gonna put some liquid patina. Okay. And I just wanna get a little brush. that. Just a little soft brush. It's pretty dark. I'm blotting it. I'm going to start over here in the corners. And you know, there's no crackle on the back. I, I wanted to do crackle in here. But you know, I thought, well, I think I'll leave it. I like this back. This is gonna look really oldy. Oops, we're gonna close this before I knock it over. Spill it. And we can go in with the solvent cleaner and wipe some back if I think it's too much. You know? Here's the solvent. A little touch on there. So I like how old the patina made the back of the board look. I really do love, love that. 
Oh, who could I get our stencil on here and then go over the stencil designs with the liquid patina without getting it all over the paper? Just kind of blot it on. So all the liquid patina has been added and I'm gonna just pull the stencil off and show you um, the result with the liquid patina on the stenciled design. And um, you know, it looks good. So when you look at this like at a side angle, it's kind of hard to see, but the light catches it as you move around it. So, you know, that's the, the iridescent type glaze paste and um, it's very pretty the way it catches light and we added um, antique gold antique paste around here on top of liquid patina I made it oldie and agey and over here we had finished up on the front we just need to add um, we're gonna put some twine on here so I'm gonna do that now and I am going to use express glue and not a hot glue gun. So we're just going to We're just going to make sure we have a generous length. And you just sort of wrap it nice and taut around the side. So yeah. And it's starting to hold already, which is really great. It's what I love about Express Glue. I think I'm gonna go around this another time with more twine. So I wonder if I have enough on this side. Yeah, I do. So let's add some more express glue. All right. Okay, I have um, tried to set the two layers of twine that we wrapped around and I took my silicone paint blade because it doesn't stick to glue and stuff so and just sort of um, you know made sure that everything is in here good and tight and even and I let it sit butted up against this area where I cut the twine to piece them together at the ends so they would you know stick and not move and pop away from each other I'm keeping my eye on them and now we're going to add um, Pentart clear varnish gloss to seal the project um, it will um, protect the finishes and keep the crackles from continuing to break down and um, so we will get that going and use a, a clean, dry, soft brush to apply your clear varnish gloss. And you can just brush it on. And it's okay to apply clear varnish gloss over crackles that have had antique paste on them. This one's almost empty. This has a strong um, scent, so you want to be in a well ventilated room. And, um, whoops, I have all this 
twine stuff sticking up right here. I didn't catch that earlier. I carefully turn that off. I really don't want to be pulling on it. So make sure you're in a good, you know, well ventilated area. And um, don't have like a, a fan or air blowing on your project when you're doing um, your crackle type media because um, you need stable <clears throat> room temperature and it can't be too cold and you don't want air blowing on your stuff or blowing debris into it either. And, um, the, the odor from the clear varnish will dissipate after a half a day or a day. I personally don't notice it after it has dried well and good. Alrighty, that's it. It's gonna dry overnight and then I'll come back and record applying um, a bow. Okay, be back. The last bit where we signed off, um, I was talking about coming back and making the bow. I had decided to add um, Antique Paste by Pentart in um, the color Umbra and Pentart Wax Paste Metallic in Turtle Green. And I um, decided to add those to all of the stencil design on this project. And off camera, this morning I did add it. And I left some spaces where I could come on and do some with you and show you what I did. But I love the look that um, antiquing these designs gave the project. Um, and this was after the clear gloss varnish was on here. Um, the wax paste metallic actually stayed on the best, um, given that this is a, uh, you know, varnished. So I'm just gonna close up here for you and see if I can get my light down closer. There we go. Um, I just love the agey, almost mossy old color. It just reminds me of an old vintage moss color. Um, and you can see how some of the stencil glaze paste got crackled. So is what I did is I went around with the wax paste metallic and turtle green. And I even added some all around here and some touches of it here. But I wanted to show you how I do it. And we're gonna do the antique paste on here. So you have two options. You can take your stencil and put it back on the, the design. So in this case, the established, the EST with the lines goes there. And I have this little brush, just a small artist brush. And I like it because it has the, the tip, it's an angle and it fits little small things nicely. And that's why I like to use it. So you just go in and you know, if you don't want, like if you just want to get it on the stencil design, you can just, you know, use it through your stencil. But honestly, I went on mine without the stencil after a while just to see how it went. So here's antique paste on the numbers and the line. And you just have to rub in pretty firmly. Don't, you know, don't be afraid to just really try to rub that in. And so there you go. And you can go in with your cloth and wipe it away. And it's, you know, these lines and that design are so, are so fine and tiny. And there is some crackling going on here. So, you know, it gives it character. And um, let's see. And then over here on these, you can just go in with your, you literally can just rub in with your antique paste. You don't have to worry about it getting outside the stencil design because all it does is kind of antique the area. And it looks good. You know, I like it. 
and I do the same over here. Okay, and over here. You know, and if you see areas where you think, oh, I could have done some more antiquing there, you just go in with your brush. And I, I'm just one of those people who, I'm always tweaking a project. Like I'm always going in and saying, oh, I think I need to do that. And sometimes I leave them alone, but a lot of times I just am tweaking and playing around with everything, so. And I love it. So as you can see, there's some more antiquing there. And it brings out the stencil design so much better because the iridescent glaze paste is um, not saturated rich color. It's it's light in, in the way you turn it one way and then you see the color when you turn it the other way. So I felt like this needed some more antique paste and some colored wax paste. And that's what I did. And you just go in and you you rub around and it really brings out your your stencil details much nicer. And I can do this one a little more, our little flourish under the bunny's feet. And I love the way this dot turned out like a little mini egg. I thought that turned out cute. Now is what I would do to this board on the sides. I would go in on the sides with um, antique paste and um, or even paint. You could do antique gold paint, like um, delicate metallic paint. But um, you can go in with a, um, a gold or antique gold wax paste and color the sides. So, um, and like for example, this is what antique paste would look like on this side. Okay, but I really think it'd be very, very pretty with antique gold since we use that in the crackles. And we'll use this brush. So this is antique gold, um, antique paste by Pintart. So here you go. This is what it looks like. And you could go over it randomly with touches of... Uh, Umbra, antique paste Umbra. And you could go over it with um, wax paste and turtle green. You could do Umbra to age it some more. So there you go. And if you're doing just the wax paint, antique paste, you could just go over it with the varnish to seal the edge. And then go over it with some uh, wax paste and turtle green like I did on the stencil designs that I showed you. So that looks pretty. It goes with the whole project and I love it. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so let's, let's rub this back and show you. And I did sand the sides to get rid of all the fuzzy fibers that were from the rice paper. So, get some more on there. And now we're going to go back and we're going to go over it with a little bit of um, Umbra Anti Paste for that oldie AG vibe that I love. Go over here and up here. You can see, and clean it with a cloth. And then, just to show you what the green looks like with it, it's just sort of a mix, you know? You think of how stuff just ages over time and patinas and gets grungy and dirty. So, oh, I love it. Perfect. And I'll seal the sides with varnish. So there you go. Okay. And like little things sticking out from the sanding. Huh. That drives me crazy. Okay. 
So the next step will be to do a ribbon and a bow, and I'll be back for that. Thank you. Hi, okay, so I am back to show you how I do um, the bow. And this is actually gonna be a more simple bow since our project was kind of like a um, farmhouse style. And I have this wonderful cotton velvet ribbon and um, it's kind of, I don't know, not quite an olive green, but you know, I think it's very pretty, kind of rich, but also natural. And um, it's from Hobby Lobby by Merchant 41. And it is um, labeled velvet trim with frayed edge, color green, and it's three yards for $4.99. I think I got this on sale. And um, it has a SKU number 2092492. And it's 98% cotton. So I really like that about this ribbon. So this is easy and this is uh, pretty much what it's gonna look like. I'll just lay it on the board. There we go. And um, these are little velvet flowers I get from Sister Rose Violet from Etsy. She's in Australia and I buy them in, the, in bulk from her. Um, I've bought them from her um, for years. So um, I just love them and I think they're cute for this project. And so is what you want to do is you cut a, yourself a length of twine or cording or whatever you prefer. Something very sturdy and strong that you can pull really tight to cinch up your, your bow when you're done with it. And you anchor it underneath your bow dabra. And this is just like having an extra pair of fingers or hands that holds your material while you make your bows. And um, I bought it on Amazon. And it was um, not too expensive. This is the standard size one. There is one that makes mini bows too. And um, this one you can make fairly standard size or larger fluffy bows. And it just depends on how long you make your loops and stuff. So we're gonna start out by making about a six inch tail to drape off of our bodabra. And so um, you just put your first length of ribbon in here. And let's see, I have my grid lines, so I'll just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A little too long. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's good. And then we'll do our other tail at the end after we do the loops. So you're gonna fold over your first loop. And since this ribbon is not double-sided, we're gonna turn our fabric so you're gonna put this on this side your your spool and you're just gonna turn this part here down here to show the underside up and then you want your good part of your ribbon to show up looking at you and I want my bows to be like this size. So I'm using the side of the Bodebra, each edge, to, to determine how long I want them. I don't want them to be past this edge. So that's how wide they're gonna be, okay? And then you take your next loop, you turn this one around, so you have the underside of the ribbon facing up looking at you, and then you bring your spool around and you have the good side of the ribbon looking up at you now after you turned the ribbon. You cinch it in nice and tight down there. See if it's lining up to your edge, the outer part of your bow. So I want to do one more loops. I've, I'm going to have, no, actually I'm going to do two more. So I want three bow loops, one, two, three like I have on this one so undo your spool so you have length to work with so and I have to cut off these little loose strings they drive me bonkers okay so now you want to 
see which way I should be twisting this. I guess this way works. So, or maybe it should go this way. Yeah, that flows better with the other side. So you twist it. Bring it in here, cinch it down. And then you do the same. You twist this one so the underside looks up at you. And then you have the pretty velvet side now looking up at you after you bend it over. Okay, so that is now two loops on each side. And cut my strings off. So you want to twist this again, fold it over. twist in the middle and then oops I run out and there you go all right and that actually worked out because I just ran out of ribbon and that's perfect length on this tail here so now you can take your bow dabber wand and you just sort of scooch your fabric down to make it nice and tight. But you know, this is such fluffy cotton velvet, it really doesn't cinch down very well. So you pull out your twine that you had tucked underneath your bodabra, you pull it up to the center, and you tie it like you're gonna tie a shoe or something, and you just pull it as tight as you can, like really, really tight. This is super fluffy fabric, so I have to really pull. And you need good, sturdy cord or twine to do this. Okay. And now you can just pull up your bow out of here, okay? And then let me shake out all the little shedding stuff. So as you can see, this is like super duper fluffy. <laughs> You know, and you have to like find your front again if you forgot. Like sometimes I move mine around. You sort of have to pull your tails to the position you want them so they drape down nice. And then you just tweak your loops up here so they lay right for you because cinching the twine just sort of shifts things around, you know. And um, you just tweak and tweak and you get it the way you want it. So we want to get this this way. This goes in the back, this is in the middle. Okay. Now you want to just cut your bits of twine off so they don't hang down and show if you don't want them to. And get your tail sorted again. Get your loops sorted. You can twist them around. You know, get them laying the way you want. that out of here and then you can just take these I'm gonna hot glue mine on but I don't have the glue gun heated up so I'm just gonna wrap them and just sort of give you an idea of what they'll look like on here they have their little wires you know I kind of like them to be like staggered and draping down I wrap that in there. The leaves can drape down a little bit. Kind of cute. 
And then you have your project. Got to fix your bows. The flowers. And I don't know if I want mine down there like that. Or if I want it all the way up here. I just don't know yet. I'll figure it out. And then you want to trim this and make like your little your little tails like this to make them nice and neat looking. And that's it. That's how I do those. And um, this is really one of the most simple bows I've ever made on a Bodabra because I didn't want this to be fussy because of my little farmhouse style project. And um, here is a fancy bow that I made for this heart. And this has um, a wide velvet ribbon and then this kind of satin sparkle ribbon. And this has one, two, three bow loops. This has one loop. This Christmas ornament was a super fluffy bow. It has two types of tool. And it has this tool, this tool, this wired snowflake ribbon, this wired little ribbon. And, um... I think that's it. So four types of ribbons and I made them super fluffy. And then let's see, here is a three loop velvet bow I made at Christmas for this ornament. And um, so that's some examples of this standard size Bodabra to make different kinds of bows. And it's just, like I said, it's handy because it helps you park your fabric on there, your ribbon on there, and it holds it for you. And you're able to cinch it up nice and tight. And it helps to make things even. And, you know, once you start using it, you really enjoy having it. So I recommend it. And you can get a uh, smaller Bodabra too for mini bows. All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope that helps. Have a great day. Bye-bye.